Good afternoon, Senator Dow, Representative Tipping, and members of the Joint Standing Committee on Taxation. My name is Dana Connors. I'm the President of the Maine State Chamber of Commerce. I am here today to speak in strong support of LD 1781, an act to encourage new major investment in shipbuilding facilities and the preservations of jobs. It says it well. LD 1781 will help secure jobs and investment in one of the largest and most important industries here in the state, the shipbuilding industry. This tax credit will help to keep Maine's Bath Iron Works competitive in the global markets in which they operate. I strongly believe that we absolutely need to keep this tax credit in place. BIW's 5,700 employees and their families, for one, depend on it. BIW has employees that come from towns across Maine, north of Norwich Walk, Rumford to south of Biddeford. With a payroll of $350 million, there is no question as to the impact BIW has on our state. The average salary at BIW is $60,820, which is more than I have 10,000, it should read 16,000 above the average in Maine, which is at 44,000 today. Along with the benefit suite that includes healthcare, pension, 401k with company match, paid time off, paid non-disability leave, and other available <laughs> voluntary benefits. As significant as this is, these folks are not the only ones that benefit from the company's presence and investment here in the state. BIW also has a significant indirect impact on the multitude of vendors and suppliers with whom they do business, an impact approaching 300 main companies representing $45 million. Shipbuilding is very competitive. Bath Ironworks competes with <coughs> shipbuilders all over the world, specifically with Engo Shipyard located in Mississippi. It's a company that's larger than BIW, backed by a state who generously supports the industry and provides a multitude of lucrative incentives designed to ensure that that facility is the best position to compete vigorously for contracts with the Navy. If BIW is to compete on a level playing field with its competitors, we have to offer incentives that attract capital here. It's imperative that we offer a competitive package. How else can we ensure our future? The shipbuilding tax credit Maine originally had in our statute has now expired. The credit before you today is very similar to that one. The enactment of that credit in 1997 helped to secure over 5,000 jobs and resulted in companies spending over $500 million in investment. That might not come here otherwise. As a result, BI, BIW ended up investing over two and a half times what was expected as only $200 million was required in the original bill. This credit will help to secure our shipbuilding future, which is so vital to not only the people who work directly for BIW and those who indirectly benefit from having investment and jobs flow to this facility. It is, in fact, will serve the economy of our entire state. I'll finish with this. Your closing comments in the bill says it about as well as it can be said. The purpose of this bill is to encourage major investments in shipbuilding facilities, to ensure the long-term survival of the, of the industry, to preserve numerous opportunities for jobs for the people of the state, to make the state more competitive in this industry, and to ensure the preservation and betterment of the economy of the state of Maine for the benefit of all of its people. To that I say amen, and I hope you'll see it as we do. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? Senator Chenet. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good to see you. Thank you. Um, so you say here that if BIW is to compete on a level playing field with its competitors, we have to offer incentives. We, I'm assuming, being the public and taxpayers. The state, yes, yep. that's the state. So I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused. Why, would, why shouldn't the parent company make an investment to make their own company competitive? Why is it our, you know, we talk a lot about private sector versus public sector. Why can't the parent company make that investment to make one of their own companies competitive? Oh, I think you've heard from John Fitzgerald that they have. I mean, over 20 years, they received 60 million. They were required to put 200 in. They put 500 million in. That's a heck of a return on investment. I think that speaks well to their commitment, I think it speaks well to their investment. And I think going forward, you will see much of the same. The alternative to that is one that we do not want to talk about because it affects both the community as well as the state, businesses as well as employees. Too much to risk. Thank you. Any further questions from the committee? 
Thank you very much. Thank